Hello everyone, my name is Agent Paul of Mobile Task Force Delta 7, Codename Bookkeepers. And the SCP we will be reviewing today is SCP-111, Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures. All specimens of SCP-111 in captivity are housed at Site-19 wing in a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter plexiglass enclosure containing a temperate forest habitat transplanted from its natural surroundings. Habitat temperature will be maintained at 30 degrees Celsius. Feeding is to take place weekly by personnel placing 3 kilograms of iceberg lettuce into the containment chamber. Water is to be supplied by an automatic misting system which regulates humidity levels at 50%, both for water required by SCP-111 and to prevent fires. In event of SCP-111 specimens breeding, personnel are to collect all eggs and transport them to the biological studies wing for freezing. Description: SCP-111 is an apparently artificial species of invertebrate vaguely resembling snails. Adult specimens of SCP-111 are approximately 20 centimeters in length and 12 centimeters in width and 15 centimeters in height although exact size differs slightly between specimens. SCP-111 specimens differ from ordinary snails that they have a warm-blooded metabolism, complex eyes, small horns consisting of cartilage ridge tentacles, apparently increased intelligence, personally are required to read test log, for examples, and a complex vertebrate type jaw structure. As well, specimens lay eggs possessing hardened shells. Most abnormally, SCP-111 specimens possess small hollow sacs below their lower jaws containing methane from digestive byproducts. A series of <laughs> along the inside of the trachea serve as a lighter igniting stored methane as the specimen exhales, blowing a small jet of flames from its mouth. Said fire the breathing generally occurs in event of stress or anger, although it is not apparently used deliberately for destruction, but rather as a warning. This is presumably due to the limited size of methane sacs, which limits SCP-111 specimens in the amount of fire they can exhale at a time, and requiring both time and starch-rich food to refuel. SCP-111's behavior is inconsistent with that of ordinary snail species including whistling and hooting vocalizations easily audible to humans, high in intellect seen in such tests as and parents caring for their young. Hatchlings have been observed imprinting on their parents, other members of their own species, or researchers. This is presumed to be a deliberate trait based on document 111-A as it means that hatchlings imprint upon owners. History on a package containing 12 SCP-111 eggs and document 111-A was mailed to a Foundation Front organization. Mobile Task Force Alpha 4 has proven unable to locate the sender of said package. And here we have document 111-A. New from Dr. Wondertainment, Dragon Snails. The perfect pet for the fantasy-loving child. Care and hatching instructions. Having read this document, take the eggs out of the box. Be careful. Dragon snail eggs are fragile. Put the eggs in a warm, safe place and wait 7 to 10 days. Hold your newly hatched dragon snails so they get a good look at you and they think you're their mommy. Enjoy your new pet dragon snails. To feed your dragon snails, to give your new little friends some raw veggies, lettuce, brussels sprouts, beans, any sort of salad stuff you don't want. Remember to give them water, a small glass each, once a day. For your enjoyment, dragon snails come in six types. Breed them for unique pets. Types. Slimy bellies. Adorable and oozy little fellows with awesome fire engine red colored skin, little black horns and belly, and a speckled tan shell. Beautiful robin's egg blue eggs. Ooze drakes. Inquisitive little creatures with neat banana-colored skin, curly horns, and striped shells. Pale ten eggs like a chicken. Goo wyverns. 
Dark blue gray skin, flattened shells, and a bumpy horned head make goo wyverns look like tiny sea monsters. Eggs are a fantastic glassy green color. Blobworms. Green and gold stripes, pointy shells, and a single horn, not to mention fuzzy tails, make blobworms wonderful pets. Eggs are tan with a silver tint. Glow drakes. New from Dr. Wondertainment, these little fellows may look like blue, black, slimy bellies until they light up. That's right, glow drakes glow in the dark. Eggs are a golden color with little red dots. Gunk wyverns. Chubby, green skinned, and dome shelled. Gunk wyverns make great pets. Eggs are transparent so you can see the baby dragon snail inside. Parental notice. As Dr. Wondertainment's dragon snails breathe fire, they have been known to cause house fires. For maximum playtime, fun, and safety, it is recommended that fire extinguishers be kept handy. Despite this, Dr. Wondertainment is not legally, morally, or financially responsible for any injuries, death, or property damage resulting from the unsafe use of dragon snails or any other Dr. Wondertainment products. By reading this document and incubating your dragon snail eggs, you agree to all said terms and forfeit your rights to lawsuits, organized boycotts, protests, honor duels, etc. Enjoy your purchase! And that's about it for this document. Something fun to know is since one of my sites is Site 19, I actually have one of these in my office. Because of my level of clearance and just the amount of work I put in, they decided to let me keep one as a pet. So I actually have a goo wyvern and I may have dorkishly named it Lapras. <laughs> well, that's about it for this document review. Thank you all for listening or watching. And my name is Agent Paul and I will see you next week with another document review. Bye.